See, the title of my message today is Faith on Fire. And I want to start off today reading Daniel 3, 13. And we're going to go through the rest of that chapter here together, so bear with me. I'll give you guys some time to get there. And uh, we're going from 13, not from the beginning. At this stage, the king Nebuchadnezzar had started to hear that the idols he demanded to be worshipped were not being worshipped by three men. And we're going to go right into his interaction with those three men. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gods I have set up? Now, when you hear the sound of horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into a blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. His attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men wearing their robes and trou trousers and turbans and other clothes were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leapt to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, Weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, Certainly, your majesty. He said, Look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the satraps, prefects, and governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their head singed, their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Then, Shadrach, or then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble. For no other God can save this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. What a powerful story. You know, oftentimes our life feels like that, like we've been faced with a furnace. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today, about what it's like when the heat of trouble, when the heat of circumstances on your face. Over the last few months, Pastor and I and everyone who's spoken really has talked about going through challenges and surviving hard times. Today, I'm talking about how you defeat challenge, how you defeat your circumstance. There is a three-step process you can learn from the three men and the fire story. For step one, I want you to cast your mind back to the movie Lion King. Everybody can, I'm sure, and especially anybody in my age bracket can really, really cast their mind back. Towards the climax of the movie, the very ending of the movie, there's a, a scene where 
Simba is hanging out with Rafiki and he's dejected. He's looking at his circumstances and his challenges and he just cannot muster up the fighting spirit until from the clouds his father Mufasa speaks into him. Those words he spoke became our first step today. Remember who you are. Mufasa fulfills the role of God here. There are two quotes from that scene that we'll be using today. Quote one, you've forgotten who you are, and so you have forgotten me. And quote two, remember who you are. You are my son and the one true king. He is saying to Simba in that moment, you are royalty, and because of your lineage, you have dominion over the challenge you're facing. Let me translate that to you today for us Christians. As you sit before your challenges, God wants you to remember, you are not only a child of God, but his power is within you. You are too blessed, too mighty to be afraid. It's time to stand up, king. It's time to stand up, queen. Fight. Be ready. The challenge that you are facing, you have dominion over. Let's look at the three men and see what they did. In this moment, we're going back to Daniel 3.16. Furious with rage, he summoned them. Is it true that you do not serve any gods or worship what I've set up? We have all of that happening, and what did they say to him? We do not need to defend ourselves in this matter. They sound like three men who knew exactly who God is and exactly who they are. They sound like they have no doubt who their God is, and thus they have no doubt who they are. Staring down the face of a king threatening death, they knew this. They belonged to the king of kings. And all wrestling fans know what Austin 316 is. Today in this sermon, I can't repeat it here. Um, I can verbatim repeat it, but I can't do it on a microphone in church. <laughs> Today in this sermon, let me introduce you to your Daniel 316. Daniel 316 says, I know who I am. Let's practice our Daniel 316s. You know it? I know who I am. Let's go. Ready? I know who I am. That's what you say when you're faced with an issue. That's what you say when the heat and fires and flames of challenge are in front of you. I know who I am. Step one is all about reminding yourself that you are bigger than your problems. That's why you need the reminder. The first thing you do is not look across the battlefield and assess the enemy. You look inward and say, I know who I am. The enemy doesn't matter. Step two. Be bold in your faith. They were brought before an angry king. And it's not that they didn't just not back down, because they could have just done that and not back down. It's the fact that they got mouthy. That's what I like about the three men. They got mouthy. They acted like they weren't talking to a king because they are children of the most high king. Be so bold that it's disrespectful to your enemies. You know, sometimes when the devil is chattering into my ear, I tell him just like this, shut up. I tell him just like that. And you know what he does? He listens. And you know why? Because despite what Hollywood and scary movies and all those silly little Facebook photos imply, he knows and I know I am a child of God. And anyone can try me once, but no one's done it twice. The devil backs down because he senses my bold faith in my father. He can sense spiritually, if he tries me, I'm going to beat the brakes off of him. And do you know why I'm so confident? Because I got that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in me, and I've learned what they already knew. A bold faith summons an even bolder God. Let me tell you a story of how bold I'm talking I don't know if you guys really get how bold I want you to be. So I want you to picture Goliath in his armor, weapon in hand, across the battlefield from you. You stand ready to fight. At that moment, someone from the crowd shouts, do you know how big he is? Pay attention. Here's the bold part. Ready? Here's your response. You, full of faith and confidence in God, says, not yet but I'll measure him after I kill him. 
That's how bold we're talking. That's how bold I need you to be. When you are faced with a challenge and people say, do you know how in debt you are? I'll tell you once I'm not. When people say, do you know what the doctor's report says? You'll tell them, I'll tell you what happens when I'm healed. You get bold in your problems. When the devil is sending you a problem, don't accept it. He's not on your level. Again, scary movies and Facebook photos will try to trick you into the idea that he's on your level. And they have photos of him and God, and they're just wrestling. And that's already silly. But you can take your face and put it in the same spot as God, and you could be arm wrestling with the devil. And the truth is, that's still silly. We would destroy him. The very power of God that he's too weak to combat is within you right now. He has not got dominion over you. The challenges and circumstances he puts you in do not have to be accepted by you. You can demand that he leaves you. You can demand that circumstances change, and you can demand, most importantly, Importantly, God's will be done. And when you are confident in doing that and you are confident in knowing God's will be done, your challenges aren't something you're afraid of. Your challenges aren't something that are harmful to you. You can trust. If I said God's will be done and the devil fled, then what's left is what God wants me to go through and I'll just go through it. That's why having a bold faith is so important because it washes the ability for the devil to trick you right away. Let your faith in God be so strong that hard times don't scare you anymore. Let your faith in God be so strong that miracles are your plan A. They're also your plan B. Plan C, I'll go through the whole alphabet. Do y'all get it already? Do I need to go to Z? Everybody got it? Sometimes the flames you are faced with will be scorching hot, but your faith has always got to be hotter. Always. You know, their, their bold faith summoned a fourth man in the fire. And truthfully, in life, the furnace is not where you go to die. It's where your problems go to die. They didn't lose a hair on their head. No fabric of clothing was scorched. They didn't smell of smoke because their faith called the fourth man to protect them. That's available to you, too. You just have to have a bold faith. And lastly, step three, be prepared to sacrifice. Those three men were willing to die before losing their relationship with God. That's faithful. Sometimes in, in our Christian walk, we talk about being faithful, and we use it as a way to say the idea of full faithfulness is I go through problems, and I, I never really question God. I just go through them. Complete faithfulness is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When faced with death, they said, all right, if God will it, it be done. In your walk with God, victory is in Jesus. I'm not going to sing the song, but I'm sure somebody in the crowd here can. Victory in Jesus, which means this. If you have Jesus, you have victory. And let me tell you a secret, a spoiler alert about the fight. They can't take him from you unless you give him. No matter what the outcomes say, be willing not only to accept them, but get to a place spiritually where you learn to see them as victories because you still have Jesus. It doesn't matter what the doctor's report says. I still got Jesus. It doesn't matter that we're going through a divorce or we're fighting and we're not going to be what we thought we were going to be. I still got Jesus. I got back on track and I relapsed, but I still got Jesus. That is your victory. No matter what the devil takes from you, he can't win if you keep your faith. Because when you're willing to lose anything, God becomes your everything, and that's the way life should be. Notice that God didn't strike down the king. He didn't weaken the flames. He made them stronger. He made them more resilient. So many people feel the flames of their challenge on their face, and they cry out to God, get these away from me. God's trying to get you in the flames and make you too strong for them. There is something powerful that you need to know about God. 
He's not in the business of extinguishing flames. He's in the business of making you fireproof. God's not going to lower the difficulty. He's just going to level you up. Cling only to God. That's the deeper meaning of step three. As a Christian, you should know stored up for you are the treasures of your faith. None of this matters. The chairs, what I got outside, the cars, what I'm wearing, the money, none of this matters because all that matters is God. And if I lose everything but keep God, I've gained everything. That's why you should be prepared to sacrifice because they can't take everything from you. It can take anything. The devil might steal away anything from you, but he'll never take everything because God cannot be stripped from you. God cannot be taken from you. If you keep your faith, you have victory. Be prepared to sacrifice because it doesn't matter anyways. So that's your three-step victory plan. Remember who you are. Be bold in your faith and be prepared to sacrifice. I'm going to close with the reason there's a fourth man in the fire. The reason this three-step victory plan works. Now, it may not feel like it every time, but I assure you, if you keep tight to these three steps and keep your faith, you will be fireproof. Are you ready for it? I want this to stick with you. I want this to be something that's almost like an undercurrent of what our church is about. Almost like people would ask what the slogan of Austin Alive is. There's two or three, and then there's this one. Are you ready? The world can't burn down what's already on fire for God. Get yourself hot for God. Light the flames and stoke the fires. And when the fires of challenge come your way, they'll be orange. But if you got that blue fire kind of faith for God, it doesn't matter. You can't be moved. Get on fire for God. That's what kept the three men so faithful. That's what kept them so safe. They were on fire already. Nebuchadnezzar thought he was going to ignite them, but he didn't know inside their flesh was a spirit that was already burning a true blue flame. And his flames may have been seven times hotter. That flame was a thousand times hotter than that because they had faith and they knew you can't bring me down. If you take me down here, I go up there. There is no loss, Christians. Your challenges will be right in front of your face. They will be hot. They might be in a situation for you where they are right on top of you. Keep strong. Keep true. No matter what's going on in your life, there is always a fourth man in the fire. If you are just willing to be bold enough to step in the fire, instead of running from your problems, go defeat them. Go defeat them. You've been running from your struggles for too long. God is telling you today, turn around and fight. Get in the flames. I'll keep you safe and watch me advance you in the kingdom of Babylon, just like the three men. Father God in heaven, I thank you for your word today. I ask that you give us a bold kind of faith, God, that you give us such a filling of our cup that we are confident enough to say to any problem, to any issue, you are not big enough for me that we as Christians will remember and we will say to ourselves, our Daniel 3.16s, I know who I am. I know who I am, God. And when we say, I know who I am, what we're saying, God, is I am a child of the Most High King. I am a child of God's. Don't make me go get my dad. Don't make me go get my father. Because we know, God, you can defeat anything. There is no enemy too big for you. There is no circumstance too wide for you, God. We ask that you touch the people today as they are faced with the flames of their heat, of their struggle, of their challenge, God. I ask that you bless them, that you be the fourth man in their fire, that this week they would step into the challenge and be blessed by you, that debt won't rip them apart, that heartache won't rip them apart, that mental or physical health issues won't tear them, tear them down, that they will go through through their challenges and come out just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, untouched and about to be advanced. In your precious and holy name I pray. Amen. I love you guys. Stick around and get out of here, whatever you want to do.